A day and a half ago, this thing was the size of the tip of my pinky. There's been stories of toxic waste cleanup by mushrooms. Without mushrooms, we would be overrun with waste. There would not be any life on Earth. Ganoderma lucidum sinti stricto. It's known as the mushroom of immortality. They're antiviral, antibacterial. It's been shown to shrink and terminate tumor growth. Yeah, we do about 180 bags per cycle, and uh, we do that three times a week. Yeah, this used to be done in my house. Yeah, we have some shiitake mushrooms right here that are ready to go. There's thousands of ways that these guys can save our world and make our environment that much better to live in. Cultivating fungi and mushrooms is like a balance between science and art. I'm gonna be taking a look inside of my, uh, this is the spawn incubation slash culture media room. And uh, I'm just gonna select out some cultures for today and take a look at some of my spawn. Today, I will be taking little pieces of tissue from these plates and dropping them into nutrient media broths to basically expand the mycelium. Yeah, my name is Michael Crow, and I own Southwest Mushrooms. Here we cultivate a wide variety of gourmet and medicinal mushrooms. Yeah, we just dropped a couple chunks of mycelium tissue of uh, cordyceps. Mycology is the study of uh, fungi and, and basically the growth of different fungi. People don't realize that there is such a wide array of different mushrooms out there. Molds and fungi starts from spores rather than seed. Two uh, compatible spores will mate and form mycelium. The mycelium starts out, we plant it on a petri dish and from there we transfer healthy sectors of mycelium into bags of sterilized grain. Here we have organic wheat berries that we use. From there mycelium will spread and devour whatever food source that it's working with. Full colonization occurs. You'll see a big nice healthy bag of white mycelium. This can get broken up and utilized to inoculate anywhere from 20 to 30 of our production blocks. Without good spawn you don't have mushrooms. A lot of people that will get into, try to get into growing mushrooms because they've grown like a lot of plants before think that, you know, it'll be basically like kind of similar, but it's definitely totally different. You're germinating spores on petri dishes, you're growing out the mycelium, you're doing transfers into like sterilized grain substrates as opposed to soils. Yeah, this is our production area. This is where our substrate gets made. We use a blend of oak hardwood sawdust plus added supplements like organic wheat bran and certain seed holes to basically formulate our substrate to get the maximum efficiency from our mushrooms. Bags are filled up to approximately 10 to 12 pounds and then from there we make our way into the sterilization area where the substrate will be sterilized for a prolonged period of time to make sure we kill off any microorganisms or competitor competitor molds or fungi. Nothing's needed, it's all sterile, so you don't need to use any kind of like pesticides or any kind of fertilizers or additives. You have to really take a lot of care into making sure that you're only growing the fungi that you desire. This is the sterilization room. This is where we sterilize all of our substrate. In here, we can sterilize up to 1,600 pounds of fresh substrate at a time. And basically steam comes through and and sterilizes at a, at a high temperature, about, about 212 degrees. If it's not sterilized properly, you'll take it in to inoculate and you'll run into a lot of contamination problems and molds outgrowing your mycelium. We have our spawn right here. This is a California reishi. So we'll take our spawn and just kind of break it up, separate the, each individual grain, and allow that to become a vehicle for our mycelium. So, take a scalpel and then I'll heat sterilize it. The HEPA filter right here is basically providing us just a clean workspace to perform our inoculations. So we're getting a stream of sterile air. It's eyeballed. I get, I've been pretty, pretty good at eyeballing it, so that's what I do. <laughs> so yeah, the bags are uh, placed in front of the flow hood, inflated with a little bit of that sterile air, and then sealed. All right, so now our bag's inoculated. And then we're just gonna wanna shake it up. All right, that bag's done. 
People think that all mushrooms are grown in the dark, on manure. We have wood-loving mushrooms, mushrooms that can grow on insects, and mycorrhizal species of mushrooms that can connect with like different plants. This area is our shiitake incubation area. The shiitake generally takes eight weeks before we can get it into the fruiting room. We can see the mushrooms at this stage beginning to like popcorn. As the mushroom begins to mature, you let the blocks ripen and they begin to, to turn uh, brown. And uh, this is a block that's, that's ready to go into our fruiting room. It's ripe and ready. Yeah, generally a lot of people, a lot of new growers will, will mistake the brown for contamination, but that's actually just the mycelium ripening and uh, getting ready to produce a good crop of mushrooms. And yeah, over here we have some freshly inoculated blocks. We can see the mycelium starting to uh, jump off from the um, grain that it was uh, inoculated with and looking for sawdust to, to basically break down and utilize as a food source. In nature, you'd find oyster mushrooms growing off of the sides of trees. So here we kind of try to s simulate that uh, way of growth with this block. Inside is a uh, oak hardwood sawdust and the bag kind of acts as an artificial bark, tree bark. So when we give it uh, an incision, it kind of just acts as in nature when the mycelium starts poking out at the right points uh, and receiving the right O2 levels that sends mushrooms out. Once it uh, completely devours all of its food source, the mycelium signals to produce mushrooms. Basically, the mushrooms will start pinning within a few days. You'll start to see a bunch of little baby mushrooms forming all over the block. Usually, they'll have like a stem and a cap. Underneath the cap will be the gills, and the gills are responsible for like producing all the spores that the mushroom will utilize to continue the life cycle. We grow mushrooms that in nature, you'd find them growing right in the forest, right off of the sides of different trees. So we try to give these mushrooms a little bit of light stimulation, kind of just similar to what you'd get in like a shaded part of the forest. What we do is as our blocks are ready to go in the grow room, we slap our blocks with our hands to basically stimulate the tree falling in nature to shock the mycelium into growing. Once the tree or branch would hit the floor, the mycelium would be shocked into producing the mushrooms because it's basically thinking that its life cycle is coming to an end. That's what mushrooms do. They're basically nature's like grand decomposers. Their job is to break things down and, and turn it into organic material that can be reused by the environment. There's been stories of toxic waste cleanup by mushrooms, mushrooms being able to break down oils, kind of like the immune system for the planet, also plastics in the environment. Without mushrooms, we would be overrun with waste. Basically, there would not be any life on Earth. Uh, mushrooms are very crucial to the environment and ecosystem. I started when I was about 15. I just got interested in mushrooms, picked up a couple books, and was just really fascinated by the whole process, how something can just start from spores, something that we really can't see with the naked eye, into just being able to devour things at such a fast rate and produce these mushrooms. And by the time I was 16, I was growing mushrooms as a hobby and just became really hooked on the process. So I started this business after uh, selling some stocks and, and cashing out my 401k. So I, I wanted to continue working with mushrooms as a for, for life, I guess, and, and kind of make it a career path. So now I'll just harvest the mushrooms um, just by simply cutting as close to the base of the block as possible. And then from there we can go ahead and pack everything in the next warehouse and get everything to the desired weights. Cremini's and button mushrooms and portobello's, those are secondary decomposing mushrooms. So those mushrooms desire like manure or compost-based substrates. You wouldn't want to keep that stuff under the same roof just because you don't want any kind of cross-contamination getting into your, into your grows. So yeah, we're just specializing in wood-loving species. So species that basically decompose hardwood in nature, you'll find them growing off like fresh trees or basically recently fallen trees. And those strains are like shiitake, oyster mushrooms, more of the medicinal species such as reishi, turkey tail, lion's mane. You'll find maitake growing on oak or in certain hardwoods. Also, the medicinal benefits that they offer are, are far greater than what you'd find in like a portobello or kamini mushroom. These are the mushrooms that contain those anti-cancer, anti-tumor benefits, those immunomodulating, immune system enhancing benefits. They're antiviral, antibacterial. Like reishi specifically is used in like chemotherapy and cancer treatments. It's been shown to shrink and terminate tumor growth. A lot of people that have compromised immune systems are able to utilize 
certain mushrooms like shiitake for instance has been shown to dramatically increase like production of necessary T helper cells to help fight off infection and, and keep your body safe. This is called Ganoderma sicil. Uh, this is a, a reishi species from Palmer Woods uh, near Michigan. And this mushroom is mainly used for the medicinal benefits. We can take it and brew it into a tea or make tinctures out of it and utilize it for the health properties. A lot of mushrooms have their own unique like health benefits that you can only get from that mushroom. Uh, it's been used by Eastern medicine for about 4,000 years. Shiitake, for instance, produces a polysaccharide called lentinin. That's something that you can only get from shiitake. Oyster mushrooms produce a compound called lovastatin which naturally reduces blood pressure. Lion's mane produces hericinoids and irinaceans, which is able to stimulate nerve growth factor in the brain. Well, here's our lion's mane, also called hericium marinaceus. It is a wonderful teeth fungi. The mushroom is a medicinal mushroom, as well as a culinary delight, known for the fact that it can enhance cognitive function, boost your memory, basically enabling people to recover from traumatic brain injuries, helping people deal with Alzheimer's, dementia, we got some regulars out there that, that love our, our lion's mane powder and, and all of our products, really. It just started with like the farmer's markets and everybody just being really amazed by our quality of mushrooms. And from there, like chefs started asking us about mushrooms. So we started dealing with chefs and then now our mushrooms are making it to grocery stores and uh, restaurants all over the state. Yeah, the reishi is definitely a, an intensive harvest. So we'll just cut each antler off at the base of the block. Kind of like a forest of reishi down there. But patience and time. And then we, there we have the cut right there. And we have a little bit of sawdust attached, so I'll just trim this off. It shows that it really breaks down the substrate into almost a pulp-like matter, ready, ready to begin uh, composting into soil. Yeah, this, this is the most aggressive reishi that we have. Cultivating fungi and mushrooms is like a balance between science and art. One, you gotta understand the science of it, and two, the art of it is basically being able to execute your, your crop the right way. If you have a passion and you wanna turn it into a business, then you know, don't let anything stop you.